Hymns, it is well with my soul. And uh, there it goes. There it goes. It may be a dead battery. You don't think so? Okay. Okay. Uh, it is well with my soul. It was written by a man whose entire family had just died in a shipwreck. Wow. Crossing the Atlantic to bring them to the United States to be with him. He'd come on ahead and they, his wife and I believe either four or five daughters and the ship went down at sea with no survivors. And as he traveled back to England, I'm dying, as he traveled back to England and he came to the spot where the ship had sunk, he wrote, the, he wrote the song, It Is Well With My Soul. Now that's faith. That's yeah. trusting in Christ. How many of us can do that same thing? We're going to let her get some batteries right quick. I had a really neat, cute sermon for you planned out this morning. She didn't turn this one on, Rusty. She can turn it on and I can keep talking. But anyway, see if you can figure it out right quick because she gets back. But uh, it was it was just a really really cute little message. It was about me trying to teach my oldest grandson how to drive a lister. Uh, was wanted to plant a garden and make some. He wanted to make the rows and he wanted to do it himself. And how he was going about that and all this kind of good stuff. And it just <clears throat> there's some good lessons to be learned from this stuff. But uh, it it uh, didn't quite. Didn't quite come out, and, and I, I was struggling with that, and it just it just didn't feel like it was right for today. And I had already sent information to T, and she had it all printed up and planned out. And about 8.30 last night, <laughs> God started speaking to me. And I'm learning, slowly but surely, to be still and wait on God Amen. and to listen to his still, small voice. But uh, so our, our message today may not be well thought out, well planned, well versed, you know, highly articulate, anything like that. But it is what God has placed upon my heart for today. And it is what I think God wants us to hear for today as we look at our society today at the things that are going on and the mass riots and all of these things. And we are concerned, how do we change our society? How do we get things better? Well, the answer is really pretty simple, but we have things kind of planned out for us. God tells us in his word, and it's in Romans chapter 12. We're going to start verses nine through 21, somewhat lengthy of a reading. But uh, it, it gives us some great instructions of how we are going to change our society, how our society can be better, and what our job in it is. Okay? Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, Oh, I'm in 14. I'm sorry. I forgot to turn. There we go. <laughs> Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. Not lagging behind in diligence. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Persevering in tribulation. Devoted to prayer. Contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. 
Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Oh, dear God, Amen. your word speaks to our heart today, dear God. It, it tramples upon us. It humbles us today, dear God, of how we are to behave and how we are to react to people around us, dear Father. And what our job is, and God, what your job is. And God, we're so, we come up so short, dear God. Father, forgive us today. Forgive us for our lack of gratitude that JL has spoken of. Forgive us for our lack of love for our brothers and sisters and for the lost and dying in this world, dear God. Father God, I need your help today to say what you've placed on our, my heart, what you're wanting said today, Father. You know how empty this vessel is today, and I just ask your spirit to fill me up full. Overflow me, pour me out, and let your word touch the hearts and lives of those who are here today. Father God, we thank you for each person that you have brought here today. You've placed us here for a reason and a purpose today, and I just ask that you will use this time to be honored, to be worshiped, and to change us and move us to God. God, I love you so much. I thank you for all that you do and for all that you're going to do. In your precious and holy name, I pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> the event in Minneapolis that occurred that started all of this mess was not right. It, it, and I do not I don't watch the news. Somebody had to tell me what was going on, okay? So I, I don't watch the news. I don't keep up with current events, but I hear, hear things, and I don't know who was it wrong. I don't know who was at fault. I know a man lost his life, and another man has been arrested and placed in jail and will face trial for that situation. That is the way things work. That's the law of our land, and we are to respect the authorities that God has placed over us. Was the man that took the other man's life, was he at fault? I don't know. That's the judge and jury, and that, that our criminal court system will take care of those things. But the rioting that ensued, the, the, the turmoil, the, the looting, the pillaging, the burning, all of those things that have occurred, that's wrong. Amen. And there, there is, a, there is a, a systematic disease in our nation today. Amen. And we need to figure out what it is and what can we do about it. Do we withdraw and put up iron bars on our windows and all those kinds? What do we do? How can we help? What does God want us to do about this circumstance and this situation? And now we're right here in downtown Lubbock, Texas. Uh, there's been a little bit of some stuff going on, but it's been pretty tame and, and fairly well contained. And if we look here at our scriptures today, we begin, let love be without hypocrisy. We are to love all of God's creatures, are we not? Amen. God created each and every one of us. He created Kelsey. He created me. He created Dean. He created Billy. We don't know why, but he created <laughs> Billy. I love you, Billy. But we are to love one another without hypocrisy. We are to abhor what is evil, but we are to love what God has created. Law enforcement officials have told me we have some pretty significant drug dealers just a block or so from our building. 
Am I to hate that person that's that drug dealer? No, no I'm to love that drug dealer. I am to hate what he does. Yes. Because what he does is wrong. But I am to love him. I'm to care for him. I need to show compassion to him. I need to treat him as an equal. We are all equal in God's sight. We're, each one of us is special. Where he's one of, I'm, I'm special because God made me especially like I am. Still don't know why. <laughs> For what I'm doing. Amen. But each one of us are special to God. Amen. And so therefore we are all equally special before God. It does not matter how much money we have. It does not matter what our social standing is. It does not matter what our education is. It doesn't. It doesn't matter what our political clout or our political views are. Mm -hmm. It does not matter what the color of our skin is. It does not matter what our age is. It does not matter. Amen. God made us all. Amen. We are all his children, are we not? Yes, we and we are to love our brothers and sisters. Now, we are to hate what they're doing. It's supposed to break our hearts with sincerity and love. When your child misbehaves, you still love that child, but you don't like what it is they're doing. Amen. And sometimes we need to apply discipline to that. <clears throat> you know, put the Board of Education to the seat of knowledge, as the mama used to say. Amen. Okay? But we're to love the sinner not the sin because why each and every one of us are sinners are we not yes. which one of you is perfect today which one of you has never wronged anyone else which one of you has never failed God that's what I thought we're all sinners have I been mistreated because of my skin color yes I have I've been talked down to because of my skin color before. Now, really, you're a white boy. Well, it happens because there are there are people who are prejudiced against whites, just as there are whites who are prejudiced against blacks or Hispanics or Asians or whatever. It exists, believe it or not. Amen. Amen. Everybody. Everybody has faults. Everybody has opinions. Everybody's afraid of everybody else. But through Christ, we are to love one another no matter what Amen. they are, what they look like. It says, uh, giving preference to one another in honor. I'm supposed to think more of each and every one of you than I am of myself and put you on a higher pedestal than I put myself and put your needs before my needs. Amen. We are to treat one another with brotherly love. God created all of us. We are not special in this world. None of us are. Amen. Who is more important, Donald Trump or Dean? Dean. In my estimation, yes, because Dean's right here. I can show love and consideration to Dean. I, I'm not going to meet Mr. Trump. I will never have the opportunity, but I can pray for Mr. Trump. Amen. Amen. I can pray for Governor Abbott. Amen. Okay? I can, I can lift them up in prayer, and that's what I'm supposed to do. But I can show love and compassion to Dean because he's right here. Amen. Amen. Now I can also discipline Dean if he's doing something he ought not be Amen. doing. Amen. Really, all I got to do is just say something to Gene. She'll take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> but it does not matter who we are. It does. None of those things matter. We are to treat all people with love, consideration, and compassion. Amen. Amen. We are not to look down. <coughs> upon someone as not being worthy of us and we are not to look up at someone as being beyond us or above us should the opportunity arise and I have the opportunity to meet Mr. Trump I can tell him about Jesus Christ just as easy as I can tell David Amen. Amen. because he needs to know Jesus just as bad
that is David does. Amen. Okay? That's the first thing that we can see here is our treatment, our interaction with one another is to all be with love. Now, these people that are writing that are hating and, and tearing stuff up, it's wrong because they're not showing love. They, I've, I've never in my life done anything to those people because I've never met those people. So I, how have I wronged them? Amen. Okay? I, I, I've not done anything to them. So what they're doing is they are placing blame for something that happened a long time ago. Amen. Were, were, uh, our, was our black culture mistreated in this nation back in the 1800s, 70s? Yes, they were. I, I have no doubt about that. They were mistreated. Yes, they were. But I didn't do that. Amen. And sooner or later, we got to let go of that and say, here's where we are today. Amen. we got to let go of the past, as Paul tells us in Philippians, and press on towards the bride. Amen. 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 And it also says that we're to uh, uh, persevere in tribulation, to uh, bless those who persecute <laughs> you, and we're to do it with sincerity of heart. And that's why when it says to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep, that is that shows sincerity, does it not? Amen. Amen. We're all thrilled to death that Kelsey's going to have a baby. Amen. Amen. I'm thrilled it's her and not my wife. Okay? <laughs> I'm rejoicing at this. And this is a glorious event. Amen. But how can we how can we stand to bring children into this world? How can we stand to live in this world if we're sitting here going to be fearful of everything that's going on in the world and we're battening ourselves down and, and boarding ourselves up and, and putting ourselves in a box? Amen. We are to show love to one another, to every person that we come into contact with. Amen. The second thing that we want to see here is vengeance is not my job. Amen. Revenge is God's job. Amen. Number one, he can do a so much better job of it than Amen. you and I can. He has so much more at his disposal to use to to get revenge with, does he not? Yeah. You know, try as I may, I have never been good at revenge. It always backfired on me. Amen. You know, it, it always came back and shot me in the foot. It really did. Hurt me twice as bad as it did them. And it's so hollow and so shallow and does us absolutely no good. Amen. So we need to leave revenge to God. Amen. Amen. The part, second part of that is, if you are the one taking the revenge, does that not make you the judge? Yes. And what does he tell us in Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 and 2? Judge not, lest ye be judged, or you will be judged by the same uh, devices that you used to judge others with. Amen. Leave the judging to God. He is a just and <laughs> honest and fair judge. Amen. You and I are not. And he can do so much better at it than what you and I can. Don't rejoice when someone gets their comeuppance. We're not be heartbroken for them that they put themselves in that position in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, King David was given multiple opportunities as he ran around the nation of Israel trying to stay away from Saul because Saul was trying to take his life. And David had all of these wonderful opportunities where he could have taken revenge on Saul, where he could even have taken Saul's life. And what was David's reaction? How did David respond? I will not put my hand upon God's anointed. <clears throat> well, there were each and every one of us not anointed by God. Amen. Because God created each one of us special. God created each one of us for a purpose. You know, God used King Nebuchadnezzar the most unholy, ungodly man, but he used him. He was a leader of a country, and God took him and used him to punish the nation of Israel for their lack of following God. Did he not? Amen. But then, at the same time, he placed judgment upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he uh, uh, 
punished Nebuchadnezzar. Remember, he wound up thinking he was a cow for seven years. And he lived out in the, in the pasture and ate grass and his nails grew long and his hair grew long and he thought he was a cow. Amen. God placed that upon him for his treatment of the Israelites. But God used him. If we don't stand up to these people, they're going to think I'm weak. You're, you're, is that a thought that might cross your mind? Oh, they'll think I'm a weak sissy. I'm one of them wimpy Christians, right? Really? They already think that anyway. So what's changed? Why would they change if you love them instead of seek revenge? They're already going to think you're weak. But you know what real strength is? Real strength is power under control. I have the power in my hands that I can take a, I can take a newborn baby and I can crush it with my hands. But I have the strength to control that power to cradle that newborn baby and love it and nurture it and raise it. Amen. I, can, I have a lot of power, but to have real strength, to be a real man, to be a real person, controlling that power is what's really important. Amen. Amen. God has the power to wipe mankind off the face of the earth. Amen. Each and every one of them, he and we're gone. Amen. God has the strength to be patient with us, to work with us, to love us so much that he draws us to him. That's why he tells us here that we are to heap those burning coals with kindness upon those people who are treating us badly, those who are showing us evil. And what they're showing is evil. But we are to react to that with good because good needs to overcome evil. That's why Jesus died on the cross to overcome evil. That's true. And the only way it can be overcome is through good. Amen. Through our goodness that we show to this world, <coughs> through the love that we show. Now, you and I don't have that kind of love, do we? My natural reaction is I want to get even. My natural reaction is I want to go whoop somebody. <laughs> I'm getting old enough that I'm going to hire somebody to go whoop <laughs> for me. Okay? okay? But that's my natural reaction. I don't have that in and of myself to love somebody that much. I, I really like to hate people. I really, you know, deep down inside, I want to be, but that's not the way God made us. When we become one of Christ, when we become Christ dwelling within us, he tells us in Romans chapter uh, 12 verses 1 and 2. If you look there right quick, what does he say? Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable God to God, which is your spiritual service of worship, and do not be conformed <coughs> to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Don't be like the world. That's what the world is telling us. Our job is to be different. Our job, what is our purpose in this life? Our job is to show Christ to the world. Amen. Our job is to be different, to be so unique, so loving that that person that is full of hate sees that there's something that they're missing. Amen. Amen. I was watching, uh, I don't remember, some video something the other day, and I can't remember the guy's name, Ricky something or another, that does the Golden Globe Awards. Your face. Yes. Anyway, he said, uh, there can't be a God, because if, if there's a God, why did he make me an atheist? God didn't make him an atheist. He chose Amen. to be an atheist. Amen. But my job is to show him the God that made him who he is and show him the love that God has for him to even have created him in the first place and to let him go on living in that mindset of not believing in God. 
that God's being patient with him to draw him to me. Amen. Our job is not to have a comfortable life, to, you know, take care of our kids, and always be at peace and everything's good and, you know, <laughs> just to sit back on our couch and our recliner and that's not our job. Our job is to sacrifice our bodies, to sacrifice our life, to give all that we have to share the love of Christ with a lost and dying world that do not have Christ. Amen. Once we have Christ, our life is changed forever. We are to be renewed. We are to be transformed, he says. And we are not to be what the rest of the world is. We are to give ourselves up. We are to sacrifice ourselves to go and be with those people that need to hear the word of Christ. No matter what it may cost us, no matter the persecution we may receive, no matter the ridiculing that may come <coughs> our way. Amen. We, we tend to be afraid of those people, but we need to love those people, do we not? Amen. We need to show God's love to those people. Not the love that I have, because mine's pretty short. Mine's pretty uh, uh, unworthy. But I need to show God's love. Amen. You know, in, in uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 25, it says to take up your cross daily. And I've always wondered about that. Take up your cross daily. A cross is an instrument of death, is it not? Yes. So what he is saying is that every day you need to die to your wants, your wishes, your desires, and do the desires of God. Amen. To follow the will of Christ, to share his love with those that we come into contact with. That is our job. That is our purpose. And we cannot do that. We cannot do that. We cannot overcome that evil with that good if we do not have that good within us. Amen. The only way we can change our society the only way that our society will be changed is for Christ to first change me. Amen. And then we share Christ with those that he hasn't changed yet. Amen. And let him change them for the better. Let him make them into who he wants them to be. But we can't do it without Christ. And if Christ has not changed your life today, I want to give you that opportunity. Do you want to have that love that Christ has for you living in your heart? Do you want to be the kind of person that it's not going to be a fun life. You're going to be sacrificing your life. You're going to be giving up all the things you've ever wanted, dreamed, hoped for, thought about. <coughs> all of that gets put on the second page, on the back burner, if you will. And the first and foremost is follow Christ. Or maybe you've accepted the love of Christ, but you've been kind of hoarding it to yourself. You've just been hanging on to it. And you need to loosen up. And you need to open up your heartstrings and share the love of Christ with somebody that you know. That's why the cars are here this morning, because Justin cared enough to invite them, to reach out to them with God's love. Amen. Amen. I don't like making pointing out my, my visitors in the morning, but it's a, the reason that David and Elaine are here today is because somebody reached out to you with love and said, we want you with, here. The reason that Felix and Lydia are here today is because somebody, somebody told you that God loves you and that he has spoken up here. We need to open up our arms, open up the treasure chest that God has given us. He's given us a full heart to love with Amen. if we're truly following him. And we need to let that love pour out on this world. That's the only thing that's ever going to change this society. Amen. We can legislate it. We can command it. We can try to buy it. We can do everything we want to. But the only thing that's going to change our society is the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And it begins in your heart today. It begins in my heart today. Amen. If you accepted Christ today, do you have that love in your heart? Or are you ready to be transformed? 
Would you stand with me as we pray? Dear God, thank you so much for what you teach us, for what you show us. And Father God, forgive us today, oh God, for not being the loving, sharing, giving people that you've called us to be. Father God, we can do so much more. Father, we get wrapped up in our own selves and we get worried about taking care of ourselves that we forget about that lost and dying world. Father God, break our hearts today for those people who are lost, that are going to the devil's hell. God, if there's anyone this morning that has not received you as Lord and Savior, has not felt your great love, has not been transformed by you, by that renewing of their mind. Father, let them today come and accept you as Lord and Savior. Father, if there's anything that anybody needs to take care of today, any business they need to talk to you about, Father, let them come and take care of that this morning. Lord God, I, I praise you today for what you're doing in my life and for what you're doing in the lives of this congregation. May your love continue to grow. I ask all this in your precious name. Amen. 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 As we sing this morning, if God is speaking to you today, would you come please? With